Good day, everyone. Before anything else, let me thank the organizer of this forum for inviting us to present one of the most significant outputs of the R&D sector. Today, I will be presenting to you the development and profitable utilization of the Itik Pinas, particularly the IT Kayumangi, which was developed through a collaborative research project between the National Swine and Poultry R&D Center of the Bureau of Animal Industry and the DOST. Before we proceed with the presentation, let me show you the outline of our presentation or my presentation today. First, let me present to you the introduction, which will give a brief history of the duck industry, which will be followed by the challenges that the duck industry has experienced through the years. And then they are in the response to the problem. Then we will proceed to the presentation of the outputs of R&D and discuss a little bit or touch on establishing ETIC Pinas Enterprise, which will cover critical requirements to the enterprise, potential sources of stocks, feed resources and feeding, flock health management. And I will also present to you towards the end of this presentation, the way forward activities of, uh, in R&D. The duck industry in the Philippines dates back to pre-Hispanic area. Before the Spaniards came, Filipinos were already producing and consuming balut. <clears throat> For so long, it has provided livelihood and other income opportunities to Filipinos. And the industry has produced eggs that sustained the production of eggs needed for hatching, balut, salted eggs, and ethnic and other ethnic delicacies. However, at the turn of the century, the industry encountered its biggest challenge that put it on a verge of collapse. As you can see in the graph presented in this slide, from 2006, we saw uh, up to 2014, we saw a decline in the inventory of ducks in the country, which was also shown in the volume of egg production from 20, uh, uh, 2006 to 2010. <clears throat> now, the decline in the duck, uh, duck industry was primarily blamed on the dwindling supply of natural feeds, high cost of commercial feed rations because duck raisers were forced to purchase uh, formulated feed rations because of the very limited natural feeds that they used to feed ducks. During the time, there was also no legitimate duck breeder farms where they can source their stocks. Thus, the uh, problem of good quality, availability of good quality uh, breeder ducks was also experienced. With all these, the production of the layer ducks will, was low. Uh, the low productivity was blamed on the increased rate of morbidity short production period, wide variability in the quality of layer ducks, unpredictable production performance, and all these were blamed on the decline in the genetic quality of the layer ducks available to duck racers. Now, in response to that problem, the DUSTP card, together with the Bureau of Animal Industry, implemented a program that seeks to, to develop a breeding true to type Philippine layer ducks with the following characteristics. 
First, uniform in physical characteristics, high and predictable production performance, consistent product quality, adapted, adapted to common management practices and to the local environment. And very importantly, the, the ducks should be able to efficiently utilize locally avail available feed materials. Now, setting of the breeding objective was done in consultation with private industry players to be sure that the outputs of the research work <clears throat> will be truly beneficial to its beneficiaries. Let me show you the breeding strategy that was used in developing the APPNAS, okay? Um, active participation of the private industry players was solicited when the breeding is, uh, strategy was developed. In fact, the initial hatching eggs that were used in the breeding and selection research were provided by some industry players. What the project intended to do is to establish foundation breeder stocks from the initial hatching eggs that was accomplished following the concept of genetic purification that um, is illustrated in the figure below. <clears throat> On the far left, if you can see the circle with the stars in there with different colors, this represents the mongrel population of the Philippine um, layer ducks. What the project did was to segregate the different phenotypes or the different ducks um, <clears throat> that are more commonly seen in the different in the in different areas of the Philippines and group them into homogeneous uh, populations and then the breeding continued in there. So through the project that I mentioned earlier, actually three genotypes or three types of Philippine native ducks were developed. On the far left, you would see mongrel population of our Philippine mallard ducks. With the selection and breeding research, we were able to produce pure populations of the now we are calling IP khaki. Of course, with brown plumage color. The IP team <clears throat> with black plumage color with the characteristic white marking in the neck and in the breast area and the IP putty, as you can see in the photographs. These three um, groups, genetic groups of uh, Philippine mallard ducks are already considered homogeneous populations. To further increase the egg production, of the ducks that we are using uh, to produce the eggs for balut. The IP Kaki is crossed to the IP team to produce the IP Kayumangi, which we are now considering as the commercial line of our uh, duck population in the country. The IP Kayumangi is producing about three to 5% higher eggs or more eggs than the IP Kaki and the IP team. Now, in terms of advantage in egg production, we were able to achieve an increase from 55%, which was the production of our mongrel, um, mongrel pateros type ducks, to 73% or an additional 66 eggs per duck per year. Let me also emphasize that with the ATIC PINAS, about 85% of the eggs that they produce 
weigh 65 grams or more the weight that is desired for balut production. In addition, with the IP Kayumangi, we also saw sex dimorphism in plumage color in day old ducklings. Uh, shown in the table, ducklings with black plumage color are 99% male, while those with brown plumage colors are 98.18% female. So what's the advantage of this? Now, the sex dimorphism in plumage color simplifies the segregation of the males and the females for our uh, IP Kayumangi. Actually, it saves the farmer about one peso per duckling because uh, traditionally they pay <clears throat> one peso per duckling for the sexing at their own. Our Etik Pinas genotypes have been tested to be adapted in seven regions of the country. And they are also observed to be able to digest fibrous feeds better and they are more resilient to extremes of weather than the traditional pateros ducks. So with the Itik Pinas, as shown in the graphs, the downtrend of the duck industry was successfully reversed. Now, having this information, we are now a little bit sure or confident that profitable and sustainable production of <clears throat> products from ducks, which include hatching eggs, table eggs, salted eggs, balut, they all ducklings and ready to lay bullets, as well as other ethnic delicacies from ducks can be produced sustainably. So then, with the Itik Pinas made available to us, financial gains from the investments in R&D can only be reutilized if this or if, if its products will be used in establishing enterprises. So let me discuss very briefly <clears throat> what are the requirements in the establishment of an Etik Pinas based enterprise. First, you must have a good quality stocks, meaning we should use the IP Kayumangi. Second, stable supply of feeds, uh, both concentrates and forages must, must be assured. Also, stable of supply of water. We must also have competent manpower and very importantly, reliable market for our products. Now, for our sources of good quality stocks, private farms have been developed. And these farms are located in Saragossa, Nueva Ecija, in Candelaria, Quezon, in Calamba, Laguna, in Trento, Agusan del Sur, in Compostela Valley, and in Sambuanga City. We also have established Etik Pinas breeder farms in our research institutions. And these are at the National Swine and Poultry Research and Development Center of the Bureau of Animal Industry in Tiaong, Quezon. We also have one at the Central Luzon State University, Munoz, Nueva Ecija. Also at the the West Visaya State University in Kalinog, Iloilo, 
Western Mindanao State University in San Ramon, Sambuanga City, and, and at the Department of Agriculture Regional Office Number 11 in Davao City. Feeds is very important to all animal-based enterprises. That's similar to ducks. Um, we should make sure that feeds should be available all the time, anytime we want them. So thus, before establishing an enterprise, make sure that you have access to reliable agri-vet stores who can supply you with good quality feeds. Also, we would like to encourage you to establish forage production areas for the production of forages that you can use as supplemental feed for your ducks. Feeding our ducks with forages is very important because this uh, can significantly decrease the feed cost in our production system. To serve as guide, let me present to you a table that would guide you in feeding your ducks. Um, you have here the age of the ducks, the type of feed that we will be feeding our ducks at different developmental stages, the frequency of feeding, and the volume of feeds that we will offer, offer to our ducks. Okay? This is a uh, volume of feeds per duck per day. Also, to monitor the development of our ducks, I am providing you here a table that you can use as a guide to evaluate <clears throat> or check if our ducks are growing normally or growing as expected. Housing is another requirement critical requirement in duck egg production. And in this uh, slide, I am showing you different types of brooder houses. So the, the brooders can either be litter floor, as you can see in this photograph, upper uh, left side photograph. We can also brood artificially brood our ducklings in elevated cages, as you can see um, in the left and in the middle part of the, the slide. Or if you can see my cursor, where I am pointing the cursor now, are the elevated brooder cages for ducklings. While the other three photographs here are brooder um, pens with litter. For our grower ducks or the growing ducks, housing facilities that they require indeed are very simple. As you can see in the photograph, uh, they, they need very sim simple sheds just to provide them uh, protection from intense or from, from sunlight and uh, protection from predators and inclement weather. However, um, we would like to recommend a more uh, sophisticated, shall I say, housing for our layer ducks because they have uh, to be protected well to uh, uh, prevent or avoid exposing them to stress because stress would really affect their egg production. So as you can see in this slide, we have here a duck layer house, <clears throat> um, which is a split type. Uh, certain part of the house is elevated with uh, a litter floor uh, somewhere in the middle. Now for the construction of your houses, uh, we provide you here some guide or reference 
on the floor space requirements of the ducks, depending on their stages of growth. For ducklings, you can put um, 30 ducklings in one square meter of floor space if, uh, yeah, oh, one square meter of floor space at zero to one week old. At two to four weeks old, 10 head of ducklings per square meter, and so on and so forth. Anyway, I suppose our organizer will um, provide you with a copy of this presentation. Now, maintaining good flock health is very important. So that's uh, allow us to provide you with some tips on how to keep our ducks healthy during the uh, production period. So we need to provide good feed and nutrition to our ducks, maintain cleanliness and farm hygiene all the time, implement functional biosecurity protocols, which if translated into farm practice, practices, limiting the entry of unnecessary visit, visitors, stray animals, birds, and rodents, and the implementation of disinfection before entering the farm. We need to minimize unnecessary stresses like loud sounds or noise, maintain dry floors and good ventilation in dark houses, practice at least one month quarantine for newly acquired stocks. We need to isolate sick individuals and dispose of dead ducks properly and avoid mixing newly acquired and resident ducks in your farm. Now, we already have dating pinas, but still we are not happy with them as of yet. So thus, our way forward R&D activities would be focused on continuous breeding and selection for increased egg production. Now we achieve 73% egg production. We are hoping that in the near future, we will be able to increase that egg production to 80% or better yet, if we can achieve 85%. Functional nutrients from balut will also be studied to generate information that would be useful or helpful in our promotion of the product. Strategic markets and distribution systems are also being looked at. Now, we already have developed the balut vending machine, but continuously uh, innovations to the initial Prototypes are currently being done to further improve <clears throat> the machine. Researches on the development of innovative products will also be pursued. Uh, salted duck egg powder and salted egg with extended shelf life are just examples. By the way, let me inform you that we already have developed a technology that in, uh, increased the shelf life of salted eggs from three weeks to three months. And uh, researches on the development of value-added products from spent ducks or from uh, culled ducks are also pursued. Now, these are just photographs of the uh, photograph of the balut vending machine. These prototype is the one with the money slot where you can pay for the balut that you would get from this vending machine. And another prototype is a tabletop, a tabletop kind of um, vending machine wherein payments will be done uh, through the cashier of the store. And that would be all. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.